Any given day you walk in, your world of work is nothing more than goals you have and a bunch of people you got to work with to get them there. Think about that for a second. The world of work is outcomes that you have to achieve and a network of people that you're going to have to work with to get there. That, by the way, is your team. And every goal you have, you got a different team. Now, I was with a young lady the other day from a bank, and I said to her, I said, how's your team? And she's like, oh, they're, they're struggling. I was like, tell me what you mean. She said, well, I go into this one meeting, and, two, and myself and two of my folks are in there, and we got three people who are really critical of the project and two people that didn't even show up. And then I go into another meeting, got another thing I got to do, and I got my two folks again in, and, you know, and there's a couple other people there from other groups, and then there's people that just don't show up. And I said, yeah, how's your team? And I was like, well, the three. And I was like, no. I asked you how your team is. The problem is she didn't see that her team were those 12 individuals. That's her team, and she's the leader. Every one of you that has hopes, dreams, and goals has a team, has a bunch of teams. And some of those people don't even want to be in the room with you. What are you going to do when your own team doesn't want to be in the room with you? you got to be a better damn leader. you got to lead through influence. you got to lead through generosity. you got to lead through authenticity. you got to be the kind of person that other people want to hang out with. Now, what if that's not you? The end of the day, if you don't take responsibility for your team, you're going to be mediocre. So what I want you to think about right now for the rest of this talk is think of two team members who don't report to you, maybe don't even have a desire to work with you, maybe they don't even know you yet. Think of two team members that you want to begin to enlist today. And I want you to write down the names of two individuals that you're going to go make them a part of your team. Think of a goal you have. How many of you are single? All right. Do you have a wingman? I mean, if you're single, you need a team. I don't care what the damn goal is. I don't care if it's making money, selling stuff, running a business, whatever it is. If, you got a, if you've got a goal, you need a team. Who's your team? And I want you to write down for any goal you have just two individuals. Forget it. Make one. Think of one person right now. Every single person in this room, think of one person who's, who you're going to invite in your team. You got it? Everybody got it? You have it, young lady? Okay. So now that we have that, I am not going to tell that story because I don't have time. But the story that I would have told if I had the time was a story about a wonderful woman who changed my life when I was young. I was 10 years old. My dad was unemployed for six months. We were an unemployed, steelworking family, immigrant family from Pittsburgh. My, uh, yeah, Pittsburgh. There we go. Awesome. My, um, my old man said, Keith, you got to get a job. I'm 10. I'm like, I get it, dad. Mom had to go work cleaning houses. She made 20 bucks a day. And I knew that if I went to the local country club, I could make 20 bucks a day carrying golf clubs. Right. And I said, awesome. I could, I could do this for the family. I could do this for myself. I go up there and dad goes, Oh, show up at the golf course half an hour early. I'm like, pop, why would I do that? There's nobody there. He says, show up at the golf. He didn't, didn't even listen. Show up at the golf course half an hour early. When my dad started repeating stuff, I knew just to do it. I called it immigrant Tourette's. It made no sense to me, but I just did it. 